Welcome to the Paragliding XE Stories. In today's story, I want to share with you 5 things you should learn if you want to progress as an XE pilot and fly big cross-country routes. I got a lot of ideas from books, I tried a lot of things on my own, I flew with successful XE and competition pilots, and this is what I discovered. But wait a minute, what is a big XC flight? How many kilometers or miles? 100? 150? 200? I like to define a big XC flight another way. It's a flight where your average speed starts to count. It depends on the flying site and the conditions, but also on us, the pilots. For some of us, a 100 km triangle is a challenging big XC flight to dream about, while others can do it with their eyes closed and dream about 300. So don't stick to one number. Ok, so average speed is important. To progress, we need to fly faster. Ok, ok, thanks for the hint. So we all need to buy hot, high-performance wings and fly full bar all the time. Very helpful, thank you, dislike, unsubscribe. Don't be too quick to stop this video. I'm quoting a paragliding legend. Do you think that flying fast is all about pushing harder on the speed bar? Nothing could be further from the truth. Let us identify the things that slow us down in flight. Tactical errors. It's when you happen to be in a wrong place at the wrong time. You can lose a lot of time and, in the worst case, even have to abort your flight and land. Finding thermals. You cross a valley or glide to the next cloud and need to find the next climb. It's not always that easy. Flying slow. Ok, so we cannot completely forget about our speed bar. So flying slow when we could fly faster is definitely a thing. Thermaling. Surprise! When we are circling in a thermal, our ground speed is often zero. There are exceptions, of course, such as strong winds that make you drift with the thermal. But you get the idea. Each of these factors costs us valuable time. Let's rank them in order of how much time we can lose. Last place, flying slow. Surprisingly, this is the least important factor. Flying at 45 km per hour instead of 50 km per hour will only cost you about 1 minute on a big 10 km glide. Third place, finding thermals. We can lose several minutes searching for the next climb. Rank 2, tactical errors. Getting stuck in a bad spot can cost you anywhere from 5 minutes to 1 hour. And the champion of slowing us down is thermaling. We spend many hours in thermals, so this is indeed our biggest problem. So how do we get better? Number 1. Do not thermal. Very funny. This is not a paramotoring channel. But wait, it is possible to find lines where you can just fly straight, no circles, but still maintain altitude and sometimes even climb. Look, here I fly for almost half an hour, just straight, to my next turn point. On the first step of my speed bar, no circles. Finding these lines is the art of XC paragliding and it's not easy. Do your best to learn it and it will skyrocket your XC experience. Number 2. Thermal efficiently. Well, unfortunately, we cannot completely forget about circling in thermals. Even the best pilots in the world have to do it. But the key is to reduce the time you spend in thermals. To do this, don't be afraid to bang over your wing, get tight in the thermal and learn to find the core, the best lift in a thermal. You can see how I approach a thermal lower than this pilot. I'm looking for the strongest lift and turning tight, staying in the core. The other pilot seems to be turning flat and wide, or maybe this pilot feels uncomfortable in a strong climb. Don't be afraid of strong thermals, we want them, we need them, and they are just so much fun. Number 3. Work with mistakes. We are human and we all make mistakes. It's hard to learn not to make tactical mistakes, but you can certainly improve here. However, if you find yourself in an unfortunate situation, do not give up. Getting frustrated and desperately making more mistakes will only make the situation worse and cost you valuable time. Instead, learn to stay calm, assess your risks and plan your next steps. Here I ended up low on the lee side of the ridge. There is a way through, to the upwind side, but I have to be aware of the Venturi effect, which makes the wind stronger here. I can fly an alternative route around the ridge, but it will take much time and I will lose a lot of altitude. I can try to find thermals on the lee side, but the chances are high that I'll just get washed down here. So I decide to fly close to the terrain to protect myself from the wind, and then try to cross to the upwind side. I still have a plan B in mind, escape to the left. Let's see how my first plan works out. I 
I am able to quickly get to the upwind side and climb here, so I continue my flight. This decision was my well-considered plan, and I knew that I could face severe turbulence in this area, so you should learn to stay calm in any situation. Don't try to fly into the lee side if you simply don't know what to do or can't handle your wing in strong turbulence. Instead, correct your tactical errors, but do not let them slow you down further or even hurt you. Number 4. Use your speed bar. It is possible to fly cross-country without touching the speed bar at all. Several long flights have been recorded where experienced pilots reported that their speed bar broke early in the flight, but they continued flying anyway. However, learning to use the speed bar is an important skill for any XC pilot. That doesn't mean you have to fly full speed all the time. Sometimes it makes sense to fly very fast. There are also situations where it is better to fly slower, even at trim speed. You should make Make sure that your speed bar is easily and quickly accessible at all times and that it is set correctly. Learn to handle your glider when accelerated. Never use the brakes while on the bar. Control the wing with the rear risers. You should get used to flying accelerated. You will spend a lot of time on the speed bar in your big XC flights. Number 5. Stop when you have to. This is a complicated subject. If you get too eager, things can go completely wrong. I know of several examples where good pilots pushed too hard to get higher results and ended up dead crashing into rocky mountains. Paragliding is safe, but our risks are not zero and we can control them. When you feel the conditions are too strong for you, when you feel like the only way to continue your flight is to hit a massive rotor and you haven't even done a single SIV course, when you suddenly notice that all the air around is rising steadily towards a huge cloud above you and the other clouds look like towers, well, maybe, maybe it's time to stop and land. Ok, so let's summarize. What do we need to learn to grow as an XC pilot? Do not thermal when possible. Thermal efficiently when you must. Keep your head clear when you're stressed. Use your speed bar when it makes sense. Stop when it's unsafe. In general, I think it makes more sense to focus on reducing the amount of time spent in thermals or lost due to tactical mistakes. But you can ask me, why do we even have these hot high-performance wings and why do people buy them? Well, if you are already a very good pilot, you will use thermals only when necessary and very efficiently. You will almost never make tactical mistakes. Then, flying a faster wing is the only way to increase your speed and fly even longer distances. On the other hand, if if you are not that good, you circle slowly in every thermal to cloud base, you often fly into strange areas and get stuck there, and you're just too stubborn to admit it, then, uh, well, this is the only way to increase your speed, at the expense of your safety, of course. I hope you found this video useful and thought-provoking. On my channel you can also find a lot of examples of the topics I have mentioned here. I will link some videos below, just have a look. If you want to discuss something or share your opinion or maybe just fly together, you can also join my Telegram group, find the link in the description. See you in the next story! Hi.